Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I had the compulsion to do an entire video on why the last one sucked. Oh, wait. I had to fix my mic. Anyway, let's begin. This video is basically just going to be kind of ranty, and obviously I'm going to be spoiling the lost ones. I shouldn't have to say that. I might be spoiling a little bit of um, Dreams Come to Life as well. Possibly Fade to Black, I don't know. Depends. Uh, so anyway, let's begin. Okay, first of all, it does not even take place in New York, which wouldn't be that big of a deal. But the whole reason for having the book take place in New Jersey is because the... <sighs> The main gent building is in New Jersey, and Tom has to take the ink machine over there to fix it. And my logic there would be like, wouldn't you want to take the people from New Jersey and put them in New York? That way you wouldn't have to move a several ton machine all the way over to New Jersey. You know? You know what I'm saying? And like, also, you could just have the main gent building be in New York. It's it's not that really that big a deal, you know, where it is. They just I don't even know what the whole point of putting in New Jersey was. Maybe they just wanted to have it be different, you know, not be in New York. But New York is where you have Joey Juice Studios, you know? You can't tell me there's not like some kind of gent building of some sorts that has the equipment to fix it in New York. Cause there's gotta be more than one gent building in the entire globe, you know? Okay, speaking of Gent, Tom Connor gets fired in Dreams Come to Life. But, I mean, not from Gent, but he can no longer work with Joey Drew on the, um, on the ink machine. And then this book, he's rehired. You couldn't have found anyone else. There's got to be more than one person working on this, um, on this ink machine. But honestly, it's Joey. He did the bare minimum. He probably hired one dude to do all this, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Also, I I had to Google if his name was Tom Connor or Connors, and apparently the reason... So he's the manager of the Gent location in Atlantic City, so maybe the one in Atlantic City is not, like, the main one, but still, there's not one in New York. You know? There's gotta be a Gent building of some sort in New York. Somewhere. I'd assume. Changing gears from a gent, um, so usually these books teach us something about, like, being, like, uh, Dreams Come to Life pretty much imply that the Boris from Chapter 3 is a kid named Buddy Lewick, who, um, we don't need to really talk about it, because then I'll get into a whole summary on Dreams Come to Life, but anyway, he was the main character of Dreams Come to Life. And then Fade to Black kind of taught us about the ink cycle and how it was created, but this one, the only thing it taught us was the ink makes you crazy. Like, really crazy. I could have looked at Twisted Alice and told you that. I could have looked at Sammy Lawrence and told you that. Didn't we already go over this and, like, dreams come to life when Sammy was drinking the ink? If, you, if you've if you read Dreams Come to Life, you, you know what I'm talking about. But, like, Sammy got exposed to the ink and then he started drinking it and then he went crazy. So, this book serves no purpose in that sense because it already teaches something that we already know. It's that the ink makes you crazy. It even We didn't even need to go over that. We already know that. You can look at any character. You can look at most characters and see that the ink makes you crazy. I don't feel like I'm the only person who feels this way, but I feel like this book generally just lacked a bendy vibe. Yes, they did encounter the ink and the ink machine, and uh, Bill was helping fix the ink machine and all that, but I don't know. It just there wasn't enough bendy in it, and like the and I keep going back to this. It didn't really show us anything new. It just kind of you know existed. This book just kind of existed. I feel like honestly, if you took this book out of the entire timeline, the timeline would be generally the same, except for the fact that Tom was rehired. Here's my thing. If you never wrote this book, it means that Tom was fired. I don't think he f that Joey fired Allison. Allison's still working at the studio. The studio closes down. I don't know when Allison and Tom get married. They get married, and then Joey moves the ink machine to the basement of the, um, the TV studio, or whatever it's called, in Fade to Black. You know? And because Tom's been fired for so long, 
he doesn't really have control of what happens to the ink machine anymore, even though I think he was the one who built it. Here's the thing, also. I'm, like, I'm not sure anymore, because I recently saw another video about the ink cycle, but, um, it's pretty heavily implied that the characters died? Question mark? Because I don't think the cycle existed at this point. Which means that the three characters we followed this entire time just died. It's different, like, so in, in Dreams Up to Life, Buddy died, but his soul was transferred from his body into the Boris, you know? And then Boris just kind of ran off, right? And he's hiding in the studio for a little bit until Joey eventually captures him and I think puts him in the ink cycle. Right, that's different. But these three characters, they just died. The ink consumed them, except for Constance, but, like, Joey takes her to a secondary location. Um, so she probably died, too, because, you know, dead men tell no tales. Right, so it would have been different if they got consumed into the ink cycle and then we saw them, like, in the game. But, like, these three characters, they just died. They existed in this book which served no purpose, and they died. So, ending this on a slightly high note, uh, the only thing I liked about this book is is that each chapter was from a different person's perspective, which was an interesting thing to do. And that I did like that. Anyway, thank you for listening to my short rant. I just felt like I need to put this out into the world, you know, so you all understand my hatred towards this book. <laughs> anyway, um... Subscribe if you want to and uh, listen to my outro.